Hello everyone, my name is Nestor Tiglao and I'm here to present uh, our paper entitled Implementation and Performance Analysis of Smart Attendance Checking Using BLE-Based Communications. For my talk, I will follow this outline. First, I'll provide a motivation for this work. Then I'll present some related work. Then I'll present our methodology and the performance metrics that we used and then I'll provide the results and analysis and then end with our conclusion and future work. Our area, this paper is really about uh, to solve solving the problem of attendance checking. Currently in our university, uh, our attendance checking is still manual, so it's very inefficient and can easily be cheated by, by the students. Uh, there are several ways that the attendance checking is done. One is by roll calling students or by passing an attendance sheet around for students to share to 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 write their names on. Uh, secondly, uh, we also want to improve. Uh, we want to automate uh, attendance checking, but we also want to make it more intelligent than what we have what we see currently in the literature. Uh, because there have been some proposals for smartphone-based or PLA-based uh, attendance checking, but uh, they uh, suffer from problems like uh, the high cost of implementing the systems. There's uh, some of them uh, suffer from delays due to queuing of the students in, in the attendance checking and also uh, the lack of uh, continuous monitoring. Uh, so the related work, uh, as mentioned, uh, can be uh, a lot of them are can be cheated still, even if they are uh, automated using smartphones or, or PLE communications by uh, proxy attendance, meaning uh, one student might uh, sit in and, and signify attendance for another person. Another one is the an, a student could record his attendance at the start of the class and then leave the room. So, uh, and uh, secondly, existing solutions uh, also use proprietary uh, hardware and they are therefore costly and uh, it's not easy to modify this, uh, this hardware. For our work, we adopted timestamping uh, as a way to do continuous uh, monitoring of the student's presence in the classroom and also use the concept of background scanning where a smartphone uh, operates in the in the background and scans for for a BLE device advertising uh, information for a particular classroom I'll explain that later we also uh, incorporated the need for a more, a more controlled authentication mechanism and a simpler UI so that it becomes a hands-free operation uh, an automated operation of attendance checking. So we uh, develop uh, two procedures. And as you can see here on the left, procedure one, we have uh, what we call phone-based transmission, where we have a, a BLE device which acts as a, a broadcaster that broadcasts information within a particular room. And all the smartphones by, uh, owned by the students will listen to the advertisements of this BLE device. And it is the smartphones of the student with an app running that will send data to our backend web server. On the other hand, for procedure two, uh, it's the reverse where it's, uh, it's where the smartphones of the students, uh, they send and uh, they advertise or uh, data which uh, is received by a BLE device here, which acts as a listener, and it listens to pings from the uh, smartphone app running on the on the student smartphone. Uh, here we uh, contrast that uh, uh, in the first in the procedure one, the BLE device acts as a broadcaster with a specific UUID. Uh, in the second one, the BLE device acts as a listener and receives the transmissions from the different smartphones which, that have each a unique UUID as well. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, Bluetooth communication, um, uh, okay, the the application resides in the smartphone app. Uh, so it, uh, as you can see in, in in procedure one, it acts as a um, broadcaster. Okay, uh, no, as a listener in procedure one and as a broadcaster in procedure two. So the smartphone app here uh, in procedure one will scan for the advertisements from the BLE device, and then uh, uh, then it will it will be filtered. So depending on the UUID uh, and, and the major and minor values uh, to determine the correct broadcaster, which corresponds to the class uh, of the student. On the other hand, for procedure two. Um, the uh, application will simply broadcast Bluetooth advertisements with the information contained uh, containing a UUID and a student number of that smartphone to the uh, BLE listener. So here's a, a, a more detailed description for procedure one. BLE device access a broadcaster smartphone sends data to the web server. Here's uh, an example of a of the data uh, sent by a BLE broadcaster uh, and is broadcasting uh, within the room. Okay, uh, given the particular uh, class schedule, okay, or assignments per class. For procedure two, uh, the BLE device acts as a listener and transmits the data to the web server. So here's, uh, so in in short, the BLE device here for procedure two will just collect all the uh, advertisements or transmissions from the smartphones and then transmit it to the to the web server by the way uh, for procedure one it is the function of the smartphone app to aggregate all the all, all the uh, the the information received from the BLE broadcaster and then with enough pings Okay, with enough uh, advertisements received, the smartphone app will automatically send a uh, present okay, data indicating that the student is present for the duration of the class to the web server. If not enough uh, pings are received by the, uh, by the smartphone app, then it will send an absent uh, entry to the database. So the, the intelligence is uh, built into the smartphone app uh, for procedure one. For procedure two, how, however, the uh, BLE device merely sends all the, um, all the advertisements or transmissions from the smartphones. Okay, and those transmissions indicate the presence of the student uh, within that classroom. Uh, and then uh, later on, the server will do the aggregation and uh, and uh, calculate whether the student has been present during the whole class or can be marked as absent so here's the user interface uh, that we developed so here you see the first one is an uh, admin login uh, for registering students for creating the uh, assigning the uuids major and minor numbers where the major number is for the room ID, minor number is for the um, for the building uh, number. Okay. So the the student can also see uh, his list of classes uh, and the corresponding uh, UUID of the BLE uh, broadcaster for that room. Okay. Uh, the as you can see here uh, in the third uh, screenshot, uh, the the mode of the smartphone app can be changed to that of a listener or to that of a broadcaster, okay. depending on what procedure is uh, is being run. Uh, there's also a button here on the upper uh, right hand corner. For the student to check his attendance, to check his classes, to set his credentials, and so on. Uh, for this uh, system, we develop a three-stage alarm, 
where the first stage is uh, set uh, every day at uh, 12 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and then secondly, uh, at the start of each class, there is an alarm that is set and sent to the smartphone. And then the third stage is you have 10 pings at uh, even intervals during the period of the class. And these alarms are sent to uh, in the systems to detect the presence of the student uh, within the class. So here are the performance metrics that we used. Uh, so namely, number one, we, uh, we look at network latency. For procedure one, we use uh, we looked at the latency from the smartphone app to the server. And uh, we considered both a local server and a remote server hosted on Heroku. For procedure two, uh, we look at the network latency of, uh, of the BLE device to the server. We also look at the efficiency um, and scalability of the Bluetooth communication. For procedure one, we looked at the advertisement delivery uh, rate because uh, in this case, the um, the uh, the BLE acts as a broadcaster and 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 uh, and broadcasts to the smartphones. We look at how much of these uh, advertisements are delivered to to the smartphones. Uh, for procedure two, we look at the advertisement discovery time, uh, and that's because uh, our BLE device acts as a listener. And we have to be able to discover the, the, the number of different smartphones in the room. And so we wanted to know how long it will take to discover these uh, smartphones uh, in the room. So here's the results that we gathered. For uh, system connectivity for procedure one, we, uh, we looked at the received signal strength indication, uh, depending on uh, the uh, distance of the smartphones to the BLE uh, device. Uh, and we see that there's, uh, in our simulated classroom, uh, virtually uh, uh, almost the same received signal strength indication, uh, which is a good thing. And then we looked at the latency here on the right. For the Heroku server, the latency is 394 milliseconds. For a local server, we have 80 uh, milliseconds. Uh, for the Bluetooth communication, uh, we saw that the um, average sleep cycles since the uh, PLE uh, broadcaster um, okay, uh, is just broadcasting data and we have we use multiple broadcasts here uh, and uh, so it could be it's uh, broadcasting for 100 milliseconds and then sleeping for uh, the next 10 seconds and we do that uh, continuously uh, we saw that the minimum sleep cycle or the average uh, sleep cycles needed to uh, correctly uh, detect the advertisements is around 1.7 sleep cycles and and thus we use uh three sleep cycles uh to as a as an indication that uh the advertisements will be correctly uh, received however uh, if you look at the actual performance in terms of the adr the uh, advertisement delivery rate uh it's um it's uh just 0.378 uh, however, for our purpose, uh, since we we we, will, we consider that uh, we can do it uh, in multiple uh, sleep cycles, and in this case we use three. Uh, eventually, the advertisement from the BLE device is received, and that's uh, important. We don't we, since we are not uh, very um, we don't need a uh, very high uh, average delivery rate. Uh, this is good enough for our purpose. Uh, for procedure two, uh, the latency uh, values are for a Heroku server, you have uh, around 900 milliseconds. For a local server, you have 352 milliseconds. Uh, when we look at the packet reception rate for the ESP32, 
uh, to the server, um, we saw that the uh, packet reception rate uh, is uh, almost uh, uh, 99%, very high. So uh, it goes to show that we have a very good uh, performance from the ESP32 to a local uh, server receiving the data from uh, the BLE device. In terms of the uh, system connectivity, uh, uh, this one should be uh, Bluetooth connectivity. Um, the average scan time uh, the, uh, is 200 milliseconds to be able to discover a smartphone that's uh, transmitting to the BLE device. And when we look at the, the uh, minimum scan cycle to be able to detect a smartphone, uh, we found out that this, we only need uh, one uh, scan cycle to detect smartphones. So these are very efficient system to uh, detect uh, smartphones uh, within a given classroom. Okay. Of course, with a bigger classroom, uh, for example, in the hundreds, uh, 100 students, the scan time uh, would be uh, larger, but this one we all, uh, we considered a smaller room with 30 uh, students. Okay. So uh, to conclude, uh, we were able to uh, successfully implement a more intelligent and efficient way of checking attendance. Um, and uh, we also solved the problem of uh, automating uh, attendance checking as well as performing continuous monitoring of students so that we have uh, a very uh, robust and secure way of checking the attendance. In terms of uh, comparison between procedure one and procedure two, procedure one is uh, more scalable uh, uh, since uh, most of the intelligence is in the in the smartphone app and the smartphone app can be improved and can be uh, updated and it has more functions. Um, however, procedure two is uh, more energy efficient. Um, we, just, we have a, a small BLE device uh, that j transmits uh, continuously to the, uh, to the backend server. And it's also simpler to set up. Uh, and it's sending raw data uh, of uh, pings from the smartphones to the server. Uh, however, the server uh, will have to perform uh, more um, computation and checking to establish the presence or absence of the student in the class. Thank you very much for your uh, kind attention.